Hi guys, and we are live. Uh, welcome everyone to this mentorship session. If you can hear me, thumbs up. Our guest is somewhere in the audience. Um, Bankale, can you make your way to the stage so we can, I can see Bankale somewhere. Um, so today you guys are in for a very, very um, lovely time. And um, apologies, we don't really start this late, but we had technical issues and we we're trying to get that sorted, and which is why we're starting 15 minutes late. Um, trying to get our guest on stage, he's been here right from the beginning, but we're just trying to have some technical issues sorted. Um, so if the team can help get our guest on stage, that will be great. So while we are trying to do that, let's let's do like a rain check. How is everybody doing? How are, how are you guys doing? Um, are you guys all in the work experience? For those of you that are there, how is it going? I know it's kind of been slow in the beginning. How is it going? For those of you that are not, how are you doing? Um, put something in the chat so we know what is happening. Okay. Um, yeah. And also let us know where you are. Okay, Brancola, you're here, but you're not in this session. Um, one second, I will try and figure this out. Also, let me know where you are joining us from today. What city are you? What country are you? That would be lovely. Let me show. Okay. Okay, I can see Lagos. All right, brilliant. Our guest is here. I can see Lagos. I can see another Lagos. Um, great experience. The Lufon show is saying brilliant. Okay, and we have Delta State, Nigeria. We have another Lagos, another Nigeria. There are no UK people here. Represent for us. Okay, I can see Esra is in yeah. India, Nairobi, Okay, so guys, today um, we have. Wait one second, I'm just going to mute him for a bit. Okay. Okay. So we have a lovely session today, which is a mentorship session. And this is um, the whole point of. Oh, Bankale, you're joining from Lagos. All right, interesting. Um, the whole point of this mentorship session, one second, let me turn on my lights. Okay, that didn't work. The whole point of this mentorship session is to um, get you guys to meet with seasoned professionals um, who have been there and have done that and really know, you know, these this, this are pretty much the... Um, you know, the, the top of the game within their fields. So they are coming in here to pour. And I must also let you guys understand that it's extremely difficult to get these guys to come in here because they're extremely, extremely busy. So they're giving us a few minutes of their time. It's gold. So you guys, you need to, um, this is not the point where you are shy. This is where you ask all the possible questions that you need to ask. To this session, I'm going to um, let him introduce himself um, very shortly. And um, we are going to be looking at becoming effective in the remote workplace. The way this session is going to go is our guest is going to come on, introduce himself. And as soon as he's done that, we'll be able to ask him, I'm just going to ask him one or two questions and that's it from me. Every other question is going to come from you. This is meant to be a mentorship session. It's not about what I want to get from this in terms of um, I'm, I'm not the one that is trying to be mentored, even though I also have mentors. You guys are the ones that are trying to really understand how effective it is to work in the, in the remote workplace. So take all the possible advantage of this session. So um, without further ado, I would like to welcome um, Bankole Eniola to the stage. Um, Bankole is going to describe himself. He wears multiple hats. So how to even describe him? Um, is you know I I want to see him do the, the job of really describing how, what he does. Um, he's a close friend, 
but also uh, someone that I have seen do amazing things within uh, his profession, and he and he has a whole lot of experience. And we are very honored to have him in here today um, on Taekwondo, passing on the knowledge that he has on to you guys. So Bankale, welcome on stage, please. All right, I hope the internet is going to let us today somehow. Bankale, can you hear me? Oh, my, my, my. Okay, can anyone hear him? Because I can't. You can't hear him either. Okay. All right. So you can hear me, but can you hear our guest? You can hear me. No, no one can hear the guest. Okay. So this my, this is a, this is this is the internet um, issue we we're trying to deal with earlier, and it seems like it's happening again. So I think Bankala, you might need to go out and come in again, and hopefully it works this time around because we can't hear you. While we are trying to get our guests on, or if you can hear us, say something because I can't hear you at all. Okay, so. While we are trying to get this sorted, guys, can you please use the, you know the drill in terms of where the Q&A um, button is on your screen. You can start to ask the questions that you want answered. So as soon as he's back on, he's able to go straight into it and start answering those questions. So, and... While we are waiting on and while you guys start to put that in, I'll, I'll take a dive at the question in itself. So uh, becoming effective in remote workplace, I feel like remote in terms of working remotely and all of those sort of um, aspects um, is basically come to stay because the way of working at the moment, the future of work is completely changed. The future of work is changed and right now um one second i don't know why this place is dark i need you guys to see me properly i'm seeing myself in the dark one second Okay, much better. So um, it was just it just felt like I was in the complete dark and I couldn't function. Um, right. So you guys, I can see some of you have started asking your questions, which is great. So what we want to really find out is how effective can you work in within a, a, a remote workspace? And like I was saying, the remote working system has basically come to stay. There's really... Um, no going back on that right now because you know it's it's something that has offered a way in which we can find flexibility within the things that we do and many organizations some took it to the extreme and say you could work completely remotely and some started to like draw it back as well because it also has its own advantages and disadvantages i can't wait to get our guest back so he can really tell us from his own um okay so i think he is somewhere back here while I'm trying to get him on, what I have experienced with remote working is the fact that many organizations are now going for a more hybrid way of working. Bankale, can you hear us now? Yes, 
You're on mute. I can hear you clearly. Can you hear right. me? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. So now let's 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 get this started before this goes again. So please, can you do us the honors of introducing yourself? I think everyone can hear you. It seems very loud now. Okay, that's good. Um, let me start by apologizing. Um, I don't know why I was ready for this meeting. I even texted you at one o'clock, but my internet decided to play up at that point. Uh, I'm very sorry to the, to the audience. Um, my name is Bankole Eniola. Um, I wear many hats, uh, depending on what time of the day you catch me. Um, I have, I think I run probably three or four companies um, on a regular daily basis. So, it, so at times I'm a consultant, at times I am CEO. So at times I am just someone just trying to troubleshoot and solve problems. Um, and at times, um, I'm just the fall guy that just needs to get things done. So depending on that, um, I've worked in IT, finance, um, real estate um, over the last 12 to 15 years. Um, so it, at times, it's really difficult to nail myself as in what exactly I am. But I, I think if there is one phrase that I, I often use, I often say that I'm a problem solver. And if that is a simple way of um, describing what I do, uh, and even before remote working became, um, became a thing, that's pre-COVID, I have always worked remotely because that's the only way by which I could combine all the, all, all the workloads that I have. Um, Tommy, I hope that's a brief enough um, introduction of myself. Um, yes, it is. I know that there's the, you guys can read his full bio um, within the description um, later on. But yes, that, 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 that tells them exactly who you are. So like Van Kale mentioned, he wears multiple hats. He's CEO in the day and sometimes during the day as well. He's also a consultant, sometimes he's an advisor, sometimes he's on multiple boards. And all of these things, it, 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 it just shows you the sort of experience that he has. And Bankole, the whole, um, the guys here, I think I can speak for majority of them. Many of them have gone through, uh, some, some of them have some experience, some of them don't, many of them don't. They are kickstarting their careers and they are trying to, they're trying to get like a, a, a career path within tech. Um, okay. Tech one of them has been able to work with a lot of them for the last 15, 16 months, uh, 16 weeks. Um, really showing them uh, and giving them, you know, access to some education within boot camps. We've had live classes with them. And this is now a point where we want them to have a mentorship from somebody like yourself that has been there and done that, really telling them how effective it is to work within um, a remote workplace. What exactly should they be looking out for? How can they work effectively? considering many of them are in different parts of the world. And they're also going to be working with colleagues from all over the world with different accents and different time zones and things like that. What would you advise? Um, so the first thing about remote working is personal leadership. And what I mean about personal leadership is, think about it this way. If no one is looking over your shoulder, how responsible will you be to yourself? So if no one is micromanaging you, would you be the, at your most effective? So if you cannot, and, and you say, if you're going to be successful working remotely, you must be able to think like that, that you must be able to make demands of yourself to say, these are the list of things I need to do today and I'm going to get it done. And the fact that nobody's going to come and chase you in, within the work environment that we would you would normally have had if you were working in an office is, it is not an excuse not to do it. So remote working is not synonymous with lazy working. As a matter of fact, the most efficient remote workers are the most successful people. And Tommy will tell you that work never really sleeps. You are on the plane, you are in that box for six hours, eight hours, and you are still working. You are in your car, you are moving between one place and the other, and you're still working because it, it's your personal leadership how you lead yourself that determines how much you get out of yourself. So that's one. Number two is um, time zones. So think about it this way. Um, 
my businesses are headquartered in London, and oftentimes I am either either in North America or Africa. And the time zones are different. And you can imagine if you're in East Africa, you are three hours behind London. If you're in Boston, you are six hours behind London. If I'm in Manila, you are eight hours behind London. And that's just the reality. And you have to also understand that the people you are working with. So think about it. When I talk about timing, I'm talking about you wake up, you, you know that you have to have a morning meeting in Manila. It's 9 a.m. in Manila, but it's 1 a.m. in London. And you and at times to get the kind of jobs you will need in tech, you would have to work those hours that works for the organization that wants to employ you. So you have to also get into the culture of saying, I'm not only leading myself. The fact that it is nighttime where you are does not mean it is not morning somewhere else. So it is still good morning. And you don't have an excuse for sleeping on the job because you are working at odd hours. And then the third thing is about uh, working within this, because remote working affords a, um, an international collaboration. So you're working with people from across the globe. And what I will tell you is that there is nothing wrong with being from wherever you are in the world. I know majority of the audience are either from India or Nigeria. There's nothing wrong with where you are from in the world. What is important is that there is a work culture that is universal. That work culture is that if you promise a deliverable, you deliver it. You don't over promise so that you struggle with your deliverables and you don't under deliver. And I will go into some of these things in greater details, but Tommy, have I answered the first question about the things I consider to be important about remote working? Absolutely, you have. You've nailed it on the head. And there's no way you could have answered it better by using the different time zones, you know, based on your experience. And that's it. I was in New York uh, earlier this week, or was it last week? And it was like five hours behind. It was a struggle. But then what you could imagine, as at the time my kids are trying to go to, to school, it's 2 a.m. in New York. It's just completely different. And so you have to figure out how to still balance it. And those are kind of like... The, you can't, like you mentioned, you can't say you're going to do something and not do it because of time zone. It's about what you commit to. So what I'll do is, there are quite a number of questions here now. I'll start putting them on the stage. If you are the one that have asked this question and you want to come on stage, raise your hand and I'll be able to bring you on stage as well. But the very first question I'm bringing on stage is the one from Kingsley Odube. How do one manage poor network reception during remote work placement while handling tasks? <laughs> this is this is this is basically <laughs> thank you very much so i'm not going to suggest that this is um uh, your attempt at sarcasm about because this is a genuine concern um and you see what happened to me today i have been in meetings with very very senior people right at world economic forum level and they had problems with their internet. So it's a standard thing. But what you don't want to do as somebody that is just starting is to always have problems with your internet because it might mean they will take your job away from you. You know, there are things you can do at a senior level that people will say, oh, it happens. And they make, they cut you some slack. At junior level, what you want to do, invest in very good internet. For instance, I have suffered today because I am using my hotel um, internet, which is an hotel in Lagos, unfortunately, and it's not good enough. So I had to call them in. They had to come and do something to just, you know, to just help me boost it. So again, invest in good internet. Look at wherever you are around the world, there will be service providers who offer the best internet. When you are starting your journey in this profession, don't let the internet or the lack of it be the reason why you are not getting jobs. And don't always use it as an excuse. If you use it as an excuse once, then don't do it again. Just go and get the most reliable one. And I, again, what I will say to you is that if your question then, the follow-up question is, oh, but is it is expensive to buy the right type of internet, then change the price that you charge for your service. So that it won't be because you are trying to 
collect small money. That is why you are using cheap internet and cheap internet is now messing up your presentation because your recommendation is as good as your last job. Don't let the internet be what will mess you up. So Kingsley, I hope I've addressed that question. Yeah, I think you've done justice to it. So basically what he's saying, and he's trying to be as polite as possible, he's saying, don't be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> if you know that your job has to do with the internet and you really want this job, then invest in the best internet there is around you to make sure that you are giving your optimal. And that's it. If you have to I'll put two or three internets together, um, then that's, that's what you have to do to make things happen. So thanks for that. Another question here. This is from Abiodun Olua Twain. How can someone get socialized when working remotely? Because working with colleagues at the workplace make it easy to connect with other people. This is very, very, this is a very, very good question. Okay, so um, how can someone socialize? How do you socialize on your social networks? I'm sure the person who is asking this question has Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook or WhatsApp. When it is not work, we always find a way to socialize. So I'll give you a very good story. Um, I was born and raised in Nigeria. I moved to London. And when I moved to London, the culture in my organization, as you would expect, was very white. I came from a very religious background, so I never used to drink alcohol. And my colleagues would invite me to the bar every Friday to just have drinks. So thank God my religion did not say I should not drink alcohol. It just says alcohol is not good enough, it's good for me all the time. So I would drink a little because I wanted to be part of that culture. Because until you embrace the culture of your office, you can't get the most out of it. And if you can't get the most out of it, you can't get promotion. You can't get all the things that will give you that fulfillment that comes from work. So don't ostracize yourself by saying because you are working online, you do not want to socialize. Find the way by which your colleagues are socializing. Use the chat function. Ask questions about work and also ask questions about their humanity. Things like good morning. Oh, I heard it was snowing in London today. Hope you, you were not snowed under. You know, just be a human being. Just try and think about the internet as a real workspace that everything you would have done in the office, you would do on the internet. So I can remember during the pandemic, we used to have, we used to have social gatherings where everybody would come on a Zoom call, everybody on my team, and we would all have the people who want coffee will have coffee, the people who want wine will have wine. And we're just trying to mimic the experience we used to have when there was no pandemic and people could go into, into, their, into their offices. So that's the way I will tell you, just do everything you need to socialize, most especially the chat function. Your emails are also ways of communicating effectively. And fi finally, the thing you also have to consider that is extremely important will be your telephone you have to learn to communicate. You would have a call function on any social platform you are using for collab collaborative work. Pick up the phone. If you send the email to somebody and he doesn't understand, just pick up the email and make it, or just pick up the phone and call. Absolutely. As in that, that is like, that's just gold in there. He has dropped so much nuggets. I hope you guys are hearing those nuggets. And I'll give another example. So we know, you know, the one you said about uh, drinking, because I, I know my tolerance level for drinking was very low. And then you know how, like you said, in London, the, immediately they finish work is to the pub. And in order to be able to do that, I, I, I had to come up with my own strategy, which is sparkling water. So if I'm having sparkling water, it looks like I'm having, you know, I'm having gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that allowed me to be able to like you know with keep up with the keep up with the joneses because otherwise if your voice is not heard you're not seen so you can be doing most of the work if no one knows that you exist and you're not seen but then in the in how i put it in online in the remote culture then as you said you have to be human 
bring all those things that you do on social media. You know how even people like all those shade rooms, all the gists. Bring the gist to the office and gist them. You know, did you guys hear what happened to Baba Baba Baba? All of that starts to make them understand that this is who you are. This is this person's personality. Attend meetings on time. Don't wait for people to only schedule meetings with you. Schedule meetings with other people. Sometimes just to catch up and have a virtual coffee, have a virtual drink. All of that helps you get seen. So, um, absolutely. So, thanks, Bank Holly. This is another one. This is from Ron K. How can we ensure efficiency and productivity in a remote workspace? So your efficiency to a large extent depends on you. Your productivity is a function of your manager. So I always set tasks for my management teams. I know what they are doing. So I, 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 let me backtrack. I know what we want to achieve in a year from where I stand. So what I want to do is to say, this is the goal for the year and the management will tell me how soon they can deliver it. So we agree, okay, it's a six month project, it's a one year project, it's a two year project. We agree that, and we know what we are working towards. So that is, and me checking on them from time to time, depending on the duration of the project, is my way of ensuring that I am, I am I'm keeping an eye on the deliverable and how productive we are going to be as a team. The efficiency on the, con on the other hand is a function of all the individual parts. If you are the kind of person that needs your manager to always check on you to do every little deliverable, you will not be as efficient within um, the, the uh, internet workspace because we, everybody within this workspace is expecting people who manage their efficiency at a very high level. And as you're starting your career, make it your own personal culture to be efficient, to deliver on your deliverables. If you are not clear on those deliverables, ask questions. Don't, don't, be, don't be idle saying, oh, I don't know what to do. Just find a way to do it. Build the competence that makes your efficiency shine through. And then if you now finish your work, before the allotted time, you can then discuss with your manager that, okay, I need more work. If you get more work, it means you either get more pay or you get promotion or, or you get recognition. Either way, you will get something in reward for that. But your efficiency, I will put that down to you. Again, be very clear about this. If something is not clear that is being passed to you, make sure you book a meeting, like Tommy said, with the person who has given you the task to to ask questions about their expectations of you. So don't take the work and say, okay, I have this tax to deliver, but I don't understand it. No, go back to the person and say, can I have a meeting with you? I need to understand this. Oh, so is this what you're expecting? Once you get the clarity, you can then say, okay, you, you will have a fair idea of how long it will take you uh, to deliver that deliverable. Uh, but again, your productivity is a function of your manager. Your efficiency is a function of yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's put this one on stage. This is from Faith Adiola. How can you create a dedicated workspace at home that is conducive to productivity? So that's about zoning. And I say this to a lot of people. Um, you have to compartmentalize your life, right? Everybody knows that you are working from home, but they still expect you to work. So for some of you who have kids, if your child walks, your two-year-old child walks into the office, uh, into your Zoom meeting or your conference call, I don't think anybody will frown at it. But if your child continues to cry on that call, then that is not being professional. What is professional is how you will be 100% attentive at work is how you should be 100% attentive at home or wherever your collaborative workspace is. So how do you ensure productivity? Make sure you create a zone that once you enter that place, you know it is workspace. And let the people around you, whether it's your partner, your children, know that that is your workspace. So there will then be a culture within your house or within your, your, works, your environment on how you treat your workspace. So in my own house, 
there is a door to my office, so you knock. And if you realize that I'm on a conference call, you know that the culture says you wait until that conference call is over. And if you do that, then you will realize that your office space or your space wherever you are is not different from being in, a, in an actual office. But the responsibility of creating that space is on you. Another thing I will tell you, there are a few things that you need to be aware of. Your room might not be properly uh, illuminated with light. So that means you might have to get extra light. It might not be, uh, you might not, it might have a plain background. And if you don't, because again, think about this. Every encounter is an opportunity to sell yourself. And your productivity in your last job determines what you get in the next. So you can't really joke with your life so or with your career. So if you think, oh, this bland background is not doing justice to my personality. I like color. I like vibrance. I like, so put something on the wall. Just make sure that your workspace reflects you. And that, and that says everything about your efficiency, uh, the ambience, the lighting, everything. So I, I hope, um, so I started with you zoning, bu building your own work zone. And if you do that and you put all the little things that makes you you in that workspace, then it would work for you. And then build a culture around the people around you to understand that the fact that you are working from home does not mean you are not working or you are just playing. Working from home means that you are still working. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I remember when we started the culture of work from home in, in Tedbury. And you have some people just use the, the, the word loosely. Oh, it's my off day. I'm serious. Like, like what? <laughs> you know? So it's a you it's disrespectful to the employer. You can't do that. And like I said, you have to create your ambience. And you guys notice as we started this mentoring session, my everywhere was a bit dark. And I just wasn't comfortable with that. I had to pause it to make sure that I turn on the light. It's out of respect, it's out of making sure that. You are, you are portraying what you want to portray, which is, you know, which is yourself and the best version of yourself. Working from home is still working at the end of the day. And I think you even give more so that they understand that you're not taking that flexibility for granted. Exactly. Yeah. So, guys, we only have about uh, 10 more minutes. And I know there's a whole lot of questions here. So if you want some of those questions um, answered, please upvote them so that I can put them, because I don't think we'll be able to get through all the questions here. So I'll put another one on here. So I think, Bankero, we can be quick on this one, because I think the answer should be straightforward. So Faith Aza is asking, what tools and technologies are available to help remote workers communicate and collaborate effectively? Oh, so all the tools, WhatsApp, um, Zoom, AirMeet, Google, um, Apple, everything. Any, any social app that can, that you, so what's collaboration? Collaboration is basically two or more people working together to achieve a thing. So whichever tool you guys agree to use, that's, that's it. And make sure you just use that tool to, to the best of your ability. Absolutely. And also whatever your employer is also giving, to use that and you find other ways as well to communicate, like you mentioned. Now this one, Abdulaziz Adewale is asking, how can you make yourself consistent and stay focused? Because one thing that I've noticed is it's easy to get bored, especially if you are working for yourself as a freelancer. To so read, study. And you see, that sounds very simple and very basic, but it's the, it's the whole essence of why myself and Tommy, we are here today doing this call. And if you are going to be a different person in 10 years, it's going to be a reflection of two things, the books you read and the people you hang out with. So if the question you are asking is, how, how do I deal with my bottom? I'm sorry, Netflix is not what is going to help cure your bottom. And I'm being honest with you because I'm assuming that most of you are just starting out in your career. So don't, don't spend your, don't waste your time I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun and enjoy yourself, but if you are, is your if you tell yourself, I'm a freelance person and I'm work and I want to be responsible for my time. So you know that you start work at eight o'clock. You're probably going to finish at seven, and 
You just want to put in the best. So if you don't have work to do, get a book on where you are going and read it. Study that. Get yourself prepared for the next exam that you are doing. Um, I, back in the days, we used to say that when you are out of work, so we, 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 we started out as contractors, as in consulting contractors. And when you are out of work, the only job you have is looking for work. I can remember telling people that, and this, is, this was true back in those days, I used to apply for at least, when I'm out of work, 50 jobs a day. Because that's my work when there is no work. So the fact that you are not getting paid for the time that there is no work does not mean you should not put work into your life because it's one of those applications that will eventually then become a job. So when people then say, oh, that guy is lucky because he's always having a job, it's just because he looks after not being out of work. So please, during those your uh, slow times, don't take it for granted. Don't spend it um, just chatting away. Do something to develop yourself. Absolutely. Don't spend it on Clubhouse, on Twitter, and just be flipping your Instagram. <laughs> Do <laughs> develop yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so this is another one. What are the key skills needed to be effective in a remote workspace? I think you've spoken about a lot of them, but yeah, let's see. It's basically the same skills you need to be successful in your actual workspace. Teamwork is still very important. We are talking about collaboration. We are talking about leadership. We are talking about taking responsibilities. We are talking about um, being proactive and taking the initiative. The same skills that you are going to use. And let me tell you this. So um, in my first degree, I struggled a lot with engineering and, uh, and I wasn't passing very well. So in my final year, I was really disillusioned about it. And I was talking to one of my lecturers and he said, ah, I'm not enjoying this. And he said, but why didn't you tell me from 100 level? I said, why, sir? He said, but because the teacher's, um, the lecturer's son never fails. I'm like, what do you mean by the lecturer's son never fails? He said, every child that is interested in learning, the lecturer always pay more attention. Do you know that that lesson that I learned in my 500 level, it didn't change my grades, but it changed my life. Everywhere I've gone to work, I have become interested in what I am doing. So I ask questions. I go to people who can guide me. And that has been the reason why people feel comfortable to nominate me for promotion. So take interest in your work. The same skill set that you would use in your day to day if you were working in an office is the same skill set you will need to succeed in um, online or collaborative workspace. As in that that's what you just said right there. I don't know if anybody heard it, but that is gold because that changes everything. What whatever you're doing, you have to be intentional. Wherever you are, you have to be intentional. So you know we have this all, um, especially for those of you that are from Africa, you have this. Um, you know you, you're seeing your lecturer and you, they, they look like gods. That is not how it is. That is not how it should ever be. And the same thing about your, your employer. You, it looks like you're like, yes, ma. Yeah, that is not how it should be because you should be able to, at the end of the day, you if you are intentional about what you want to get, you should be able to have reasonable conversation with them for them to understand that you are here. The same thing happens with your manager. And considering you are having a chat with people, you are talking to them, you are you are not someone that is not that is there to just say, oh, yeah, we missed this. We didn't do this right without bringing up a solution or bringing up an idea. You know, if you are someone that is constantly doing those things, many people start to see you as a very, very good team player. And with that, you start to get more promotions, eyeballs, your names are dropped in multiple places because you are making yourself. And that can only happen if you are intentional about where you are and your intention about what you're doing. And like you said, that is the story of Bankole and that is why he's here today. And I'll say the same thing for myself. It's about constantly chasing what you want and doing everything possible to make it happen, making yourself sin. Okay, so I think we only have um, time for two more questions. This one is interesting and it's been upvoted. Motam said, um, how can you maintain a healthy work balance when working remotely? Okay. So I'm going to answer this question. To me, I'm not sure how you have for time, but I don't mind giving another 15 minutes because I... Okay. So for me, I need to be somewhere at two exactly, but then 
someone else can take on and carry on so we can finish this this question oh, okay yeah so, okay um so how can question again please so the question is let me put it back up um how can you maintain a healthy work-life balance when working remotely so healthy work-life balance if your team is scattered all around the world and you are working with people in manila working with people in india working with people in the us you can't see them physically so to keep a healthy work-life balance, you will have to find the life balance within your environment. So let's assume you are working in Lagos or you're working in London and your team, you can't reach them physically. If you need to go to the gym, if you need to take a walk, I can remember during the pandemic, I used to walk one hour, my lunchtime, I take it religiously and I'll just do a walk around my area clear my head, go back to my desk. Work-life balance, the fact that you're sitting at home does not mean you can't take a break, uh, but make sure your break is agreed with your manager so that they are not looking for you. And then ensure that whatsoever you will do naturally, like going to the gym, exercising, having a meal at lunch, uh, those things that give you work-life balance, you do it, you incorporate it into your life, even though you are working remotely. Absolutely. And like you said, for me, I, I have a calendar lifestyle. So I try to put every single thing in the calendar. If it's not in the calendar, it's not that important. So if my work-life balance, so this allows me to juggle everything, pick up my son from school is in the calendar, you know, and so when I forget to put lunch in the calendar, lunch is not happening. Do you understand? So, and because of that, I have in my calendar, take a walk while talking to somebody on the phone. I have in my calendar, you know, so you have to think about yourself, what works for you. You don't have to do the whole one hour workout if that is not what works for you. It could be that you're starting with a 10 minutes gym, uh, yoga session on YouTube. If it's something that you have to walk to clear your headspace like Bankole has done, you need to do that. But then understand what time to get up and what time to sleep so that you are getting at least eight hours sleep. And there are some times where it's not possible, but don't make it on a, on a constant basis because your health matters. If you are not healthy, what cannot happen? If you are not alive, then there is no you. So you have to take care of yourself while juggling every single aspect. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring, um, can somebody from either Faith or Ayodeji come on stage as well in order to help co-host this while I bring on the next topic, the next one on here. So Anthony is saying, sir, have you ever gotten into a situation where you did not deliver properly or under deliver, how did you resolve the situation, sir? So, so really, Bank sorry, yeah. Bankola, before you answer this one, because I have to dive in literally one minute. Mm -hmm. I just in case you are into the question as I am jumping up, I wanted to take this time to say thank you very much for being here and thank you for staying extra to be able to answer the other questions that are here. We really, really appreciate you. And for you guys. Uh, Mr. Daniela is going to be joining us again in January. He's gladly giving us some more time, so where we'll be able to get more of his, some uh, of of his, you know, of all of his intellect and uh, pointing to us. So make sure that you look out for that mentoring session so that you can join that as well. Um, so, Bankalo, please carry on. All right, thank you very much, Tommy. It's a, it's a pleasure for coming around. So, have you gotten into situations where you did not deliver? properly or you're under delivered and how did you resolve the solution? So yeah, several times. As a matter of fact, one of the things you should never be afraid of is failing. So I can remember when I started out as a consultant, um, there are times I didn't deliver properly or I under delivered because my skill set was just not good enough. But how, did you, how do you resolve that? If you know that your job is to be a developer and you don't know a particular language, then go and learn it. That is how to resolve it. So that the next time that kind of work comes your way, it will not be something you would under deliver because now you know what you need to do. Think about every obstacle as an opportunity to learn a new way of getting things done. So all through your life, as you attempt bigger things, you will face challenges where you don't deliver to the optimal. It's okay to not deliver to the optimal once, but when that same task comes around the next time, make sure you are ready to over deliver. And that is what ensures consistent progress in your career. So please don't be afraid of taking on a challenge 
and learning new skills or improving your skills while you are while you are at it. Fantastic. Oh, okay. So we are having a problem for somebody to join me on stage here, and I literally have to go. So. Okay. Um, Fortunately, guys, we have to end the session here. I know he's been, uh, it would have been lovely to carry on as I was also enjoying this. Um, what we're going to do is for the next session that we're going to be having in January, you guys come, we'll, we'll try to make that like a, a longer session so that um, you can point as much as possible and ask all your possible questions as well. So um, once again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Please, let's use our emojis to thank Bankole and Yola for spending the time today. Uh, say something lovely in the chat if you've enjoyed the session. Thank you so much, Bankole. We really appreciate this, and we don't take your time for granted. You've put so much nuggets into us today, and we are really lucky to have you here. So until next time, everyone, thank you, thank you. Um, stay blessed and um, have a lovely lovely weekend all right take care cheers bye bye